All right, so I got four trucks torn apart right now. We're waiting on parts. I don't really want to start another great big project, so we're going to bring this truck in. And it, it shouldn't be that big of a deal, maybe just a few days, hopefully, at least for this portion. Uh, this truck's a Ford F750. It's got a Cummins in it. It's got a manual transmission and air brakes. This truck runs and drives. However, the batteries are low, so I just use a great all. It's just a lot faster to do this than just drag a battery charger out and mess around. Where it was parked, I couldn't get jumper cables to it, so I just use a great all to move it around. We're going to take it in the shop. The problem with this truck is it had a fire in the rear brake on the driver's side, so if you look here, you'll be able to see that uh, driver's side drum is really rusty. What happened was the brakes hung up. It got hot enough to... Uh, melt or burn the seal for the hub and the oil from the differential came out it caught on fire and it caught the, the box floor which was wood on fire and it got hot enough that just by the rear end there right about the center um from the center to the rear leaf spring hanger it was hot enough right there that uh it bowed the frame you can actually see it if you look close there's a sag in the back of the frame when I went to go look at this truck, I set a laser up on the front of the frame and shot the beam back and looked on each rail and from one rail to the other rail to check for what the damage was, to see how bad of a twist it was or how bad of a bow, if it was one side or both. And what I found out was it was isolated to the driver's side frame from the front leaf spring hanger to the rear leaf spring hanger, and that area is where the bend is. So the frame in front of that is in good shape. And I know a lot of guys are going to say, oh, it's been hot, it's not tempered, it's not this. Listen, it didn't get very hot on the on the section of frame I'm using because the factory paint's still there. You know, the factory paint would have came off pretty quick. Um, so I'm pretty comfortable with that. We're going to do some other stuff to this truck anyways, so we're going to be in good shape. The body's in really good shape. Good hood, good quarter fenders, good doors, good rockers. It runs good. The transmission shifts good. Battery's a little weak. Fuel tank needs a little work. But you can see the frame here. Look how clean that frame is until we get right here. And then the paint's gone. So we're just going to cut it right in front of that leaf spring hanger. And we're just going to discard the rest of that. And we're going to replace it with a different suspension. Uh, suspension and differential. The, uh, the You can see it on this side as you go forward. The frame's in good shape. So... Here, I'm going to disconnect the batteries. I'm going to use a plasma cutter to uh, do most of the cutting on this. So I like to disconnect the battery negatives and then take the negative off of each battery themselves so there's no chance of us, um, you know, messing something up if the ground had to touch again. I'm having trouble with my plasma cutter. It's a, it's a uh, Hypotherm 45, and I bought a consumable kit, and I went through them really quick tearing um, a couple trucks apart and I haven't got any more since and I need to order some more I just keep forgetting and I keep buying these consumable kits because they have all the pieces in it well I end up with some of the pieces that I don't need so I, I guess next I just need to get the two pieces for the tip and uh, keep more of them around because I just going through them left and right I'm using this socket here it's made by snap-on it's like an extension with a 12.12 millimeter socket on the end of it so you can get your impact in there and not hit the the drive shaft with your impact this u joints are just held on with uh, just the straps they're just straps and 12 millimeter 12 head bolts snap-on makes these in a 13 a 12 a half and a 9 16 if I recall I typically end up using the 12 millimeter the most it seems to be the most popular um, these came out really nice so it was hot enough to melt the thread locker I didn't have to heat them up um, but it wasn't too god awful hot because there's no there's 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 still grease some grease in the u-joint which was good I'm throwing a strap across here so when I pop this drive shaft loose it doesn't slam down and hit the ground um, I don't want to dent the drive shaft because if in the event it is good and we decide to use it then I want to make sure I don't have any dents or dings in it because a dent in a drive shaft will not only make it out of balance but it'll give it a weak spot, and if you ever twist the drive shaft, that's where it'll happen if it has a dent in it. But this comes out fairly, fairly easy, but I can't slide the drive shaft too far forward because 
the boot that's over the slip joint in the drive shaft got hot and it's kind of crunchy and it's not flexible. It's not burnt off, but it's just enough. It's not going to let it flex, so I have to take the clamps loose so that I can. And I'm going to I cut the boot off and then I can slide it back and forth. I took the drive shaft apart and looked at the slip yoke inside. It still had grease in it, and the tef I think it's Teflon they use in there. It sure feels like it. It was all in good shape, and the drive shaft slides back and forth because it's hot. If I have another drive shaft that I can use in place of this that's in good shape, I will. If not, we'll inspect this one. Again, this is going to be my truck, so uh, if, it's, if I have troubles, it is what it is. I'm putting these glasses on that I got from Amazon, and I, they're supposed to be uh, the right lens for plasma cutting, and they're apparently not because I can't only use my plasma cutter for about 15 or 20 minutes before I start getting a little headache and my eyes start hurting, you know. So I typically use a uh, self dimming helmet, welding helmet, um, because it, it just works better. At first, this one was cutting pretty decent, and the, the tip was worn out, it wasn't doing very well. You can see these big gouges. I don't have any good tips, so I'm going back through my old tips, and I'm finding the ones that are um, the better of the bad ones. Let's put it that way. And this took far too long because I don't have any good tips, but um, I just have to get some more. I just keep forgetting to I, I go through them. Like it seems like when we're cutting that rusty, nasty crap, it's so hard on the tips, like that flashback of crap that comes back it's just a big pain in the butt so here i got the chain set up supporting the back of the frame of the truck and what we're going to do is cut the frame and then let the rear section of the frame because there's so much that hangs from the center of the axle back it's going to want to tip down so i'm cutting the bottoms so that i can be in a good place when i cut it so they can just pop up and be out of our way and we won't get hurt but this just took too long you can see there in that leaf spring hanger, there's some, some remnants of the floor laying in there. And again, all of this is no good. We're just going to cut it off. Now, I'm not going to be cutting my frame at this point. This is a rough cut here because it doesn't matter. When we actually get ready, we'll measure it out. We'll cut the frame with either my partner saw and abrasive wheel or portable band saw or something. I like to use my partner saw. It makes a really nice, clean cut. And it's real easy to manage so we know we got a, uh, a good surface to work with because this truck's going to get a hitch on the back of it, too. We're going to put a, a hitch plate with pinnel hook and um, probably a two-inch receiver, I think, maybe in the back. We'll have to see when the time comes. But we're going to keep moving on this. I, I've got another suspension already sitting there. And we're going to bring it over and get it ready to go. I'm not going to be doing the drilling like I've done before because this is not the same suspension so I'm not going to have my my um, whatever you want to call it the the story pole I'm not going to be using it this that way I'm, I'm going to uh, do something different to line up my holes because it's completely different we'll find our our center of the wheel where we need to be center of axle and then we'll measure off that but you know, we'll finish getting this cut apart you can see how long it's taken I don't have to disconnect any airlines or wiring because in the fire it already melted off. The uh, the brake, air brake uh, relay valve is no good. The ABS valves are no good. So we're going to be taking them off of a, another truck. Hmm. Still stuck over there. On yeah, it must thing. be this side. Oh, must be at the it. bottom. Hmm? Must be at the bottom.
right, many of you may recognize this cutoff. This is one of the ones that I bought, and I stuffed it in the back of that box truck, and it was, uh, we had to take it out of there kind of diagonal because it was too wide for the box. Anyways, this is the suspension and the rear axle I'm going to use for uh, the F750 we're working on right now. It's an air ride. It's an airliner. Um, the tag was missing off of the rear axle, so I went to the front, found the plate down here, and it matches. We got the right ratio, so that works out well. It's at least a 20,000 pound axle. Um, seeing how it's a rear drive axle, this particular one doesn't have a parking brake on it, so we'll have to change these brake chambers out. Um, we'll be putting a 3030 on it instead. So we'll have to take care of that and I believe it needs some brake work and shocks and stuff like that but anyways we're going to get all this loose the plan is the idea is to take this axle loose take drive shaft loose we may be using that drive shaft too I'm not sure it has the correct u-joint back here and up front so we may be able to use that all right she's all cut loose all ready to go get a little better look at it um, we're going to be replacing quite a bit of stuff on this, but it's okay. You know, we're, we're going to do this on a budget, but we're not going to not do things that need to be done just to save a few bucks. It's going to be right when we're done. So here's my rudimentary drawing. The cab, transmission, and our four drive shafts, and then the rear differential. Currently, this truck is set up for 186 back of cab to center where the rear axle used to be. Ideally, because of the setup, I'd like to be at 120, which is right here. If I go to 120, that means I need to remove 60 some inches of the drive shaft. There's not one of these drive shafts in combination that make a reduction of 60 inches. Um, it's not looking very good. In order to get 60 inches out, I either have to take one out and a second one or take a long you know find the manipulation that works the best because we need the 45 we need the slip yoke so I need to figure out which way here off of my drive shaft length because one cat 120 cab to axle doesn't mean I need 120 inches worth of drive shaft because we have 18 and a half inches of drive shaft under the cab going to transmission and then at the differential from the from the yoke face to the center of the differential is 17 inches on the new one so we have to take that into account and reduce our drive shaft accordingly it doesn't change this is only one inch different than the other one so that one inch we could take up right in here that's not a big deal but if we got to cut a drive shaft and make one that's where we'll take it out in whichever one so I have to figure out which one of these is going to get us to where we need to removing 65 inches is what my math worked out to be so I have to find a combination here to remove 65 inches. Typically what I'd like to do is take this drive shaft out, shorten this one. Because at 65 we're getting close. Because this is 45 inches, that's the longest one that we can adjust. Plus the fact that it, it has been, it was hot, there's still paint on it. So that would be the one I would rather, I'd rather shorten if I have to. Because then I could just take this one we got to lose 65 inches. We take this one out. What's that? Eight inches. I got to take off this. That brings us down to 37 inches on this rear shaft. That's plenty doable. Plenty doable. And I don't think there's another combination that's better. But I'll I'll work on the math and see what we got. All right. Now we're going to remove all the drive shaft shaft sections from the truck. <clears throat> the U bolts that are in here were they're a 12 millimeter. 12 point head and I'd use a torch and heat up several of these. Ford uses Loctite on them and if you don't heat them up a lot of times it just rounds off the heads of the bolt. The rear drive shaft had been out before. Uh, one of the bolts was already rounded off. I put the socket on there, the special tool I have and uh, well needless to say I didn't even get a chance to hammer on it with the impact. It just spun. So I just cut it off, cut the head off with a torch and then I was able to get it out with vice grips really easy. Um, after we get these all completely out, like I've marked them where the phasing is already, even though once we cut these drive shafts, we'll take the complete drive shaft, which will be all three sections to the, the shop, 
and they will do all the work and balance it as an entire unit. I know a lot of guys say they just use, they'll just dial indicate it, and that might be just fine, but I prefer to just take it in, let them do it. You know, it, it'll cost me a little bit of money to have a drive shaft shop do this work, but when it's done, it's done. You know, and I can continue to do what I'm doing, and uh, I can't step over dollars to pick up nickels for what they're going to charge me. I need to keep moving on other stuff. The parts are starting to trickle in for the Duramax. So this is basically, I wanted to get this going while I'm waiting on parts. And I really only have like uh, two or three days total that I can mess with this before my parts get in. So here it is. We're pulling the last drive shaft out. This is a 57 incher. <clears throat> so what I've decided to do is remove the 57, use the 43, the 44, and then the rear one with the slip yoke and have it reduced down and i'm going to take that into the shop and i'll let them know that it had been warm but like i said i, I looked at the drive shaft the u-joints in the rear drive shaft the one that was back by the fire still had grease in them and it still had paint on the drive shaft some of the paint was gone off the top of it but i'm sure there was you know stuff dripping down on the uh on the drive shaft itself burning it here i am my phone going my phone just sometimes goes, just keeps going and going and going and stops me, but um, I actually turned the, the ringer off there so we can just continue on working here. i got to clear the frame off. i got to get that uh, brake valve off the side of there. Everything's rusty from the fire, so, uh, you know, rust in the fact it's been in, in Ohio. So I'm looking here. I've got it cut loose. I want to make sure we didn't disturb the outside of frame to outside of frame, and I'm going to get ready to set this up. I'm taking two pieces of scrap metal underneath the frame, and I'm going to clamp it in place. When I clamp these in place, one towards the back and one a little bit farther forward, the next thing we're going to do is we will take the old frame cutoffs from the other suspension that I'm using, and I'm going to clamp them to the side of this frame to use as a template for my holes. Um, here's a, There was something on here. I forget what it was. Oh, it was uh, the huck bolts for this cross member. I need to remove them because I need that uh, frame to be completely flat so I can get the, f the other frame laying right up against the super tight, as tight as possible. The layout's going to take me a little bit of time, and I measure it, remeasure it, measure it again, and remeasure it. And I only get in some of this on, on, the, uh, on the video because uh, I end up doing some more measuring. But... We're going to pull that cross member out. There's going to be a big cross member that goes in here. I'm not sure which one we're going to use, but um, you guys know, you've seen, we're going to use an air ride suspension on this. It'll have a leveling valve, and then we'll have, uh, we'll put in an electric valve, uh, electric over air valve, so we can dump the airbags and drop the rear. This truck had a box on it, so it had a piece of hardwood between the main frame and the box itself. And it all, they always hold moisture, so the tops of the frames will start to rust. So I like to take a little hammer, go down through the side of it, and knock loose any rust, inspect the frame before we go too much farther, and make sure that you know there's no thin spots or anything like that. Because several times I have done this, and I've gone and knocked some loose rust off. Next thing you know, you know there's there's thin spots in the frame, and then I need to do something different either make it a parts truck or shorten it up farther and get, get up to good frame. But, you know, all this is very important because I'm not doing this just for just for fun. I mean, this thing has to, has to perform and it's got to be able to carry a load. Now, you know, I'm setting this thing back at 120 cap to axle. And the farther I put the axle towards the rear, the, uh, the more load we're going to end up putting in the belly. So we get that that axle farther back the, the, from the center of that axle or the front leaf spring hanger to uh, the front axle takes more of a load. So it's very important that the frame's good and strong and it's got uh, plenty of support. So we're now I'm laying the frame up here. This is the passenger side frame rail flipped around backwards um, so that we can use it as a template. So it takes me a while to get it all squared up just right. Like <clears throat> I put my marks dead on. I don't I don't want any error here, no 16th, no 32nd. I want it as absolutely as 
close to perfect as I can get it because there's a lot of variance in suspension bushings and stuff like that on this axle. So I want to start with where we need to be and let the variances be in the bushings, not in our work. <clears throat> Here there was a mud flap bracket welded to the frame, and I think it was TIG welded. I was going to try and just burn it off the torch, and it just isn't working. So I'm just going to cut a section of the frame out right where it's at. It's much faster than grabbing a grinder and grinding that down to nothing flat. So <clears throat> that's what I'm doing here. There's another one on the other side frame rail. I have to do it too, but... Uh, here we'll get this stuff set up. I said I wanted to do this on a budget, and I do for sure, but um, I'm not going to sacrifice um, the quality of the build or uh, the usability. You know, I mean, I'm, I want this to be inexpensive as, as it can be, but it still has to perform. You know, and it's still got to be what we need it to be. And uh, I'm not going to tell you exactly what we got going on here, but, you know, I, I bought this truck. Be reasonable obviously because the rear suspension was no good and the, this frame section was no good towards the rear so it's a perfect truck to do what we're going to do with and uh you know you see us here we're double checking and rechecking and all that we're getting ready to to uh mark our holes now i'm getting my center of axle as you see right here all right so we got the frame set in place and i'm getting my center line and i'm using the bump stops that's what where my framing square is set up there. there's two bolts right there there's actually four of them on this side, we'll have to drill one more because this is the opposite side of the framer of the old suspension, the, the donor suspension we're using. The, the pan hard bar or track bar, whatever you call it, it mounts there. So um, there's one hole missing. I got it all squared up. We're, with, we're dead on. And before I decided to do this, I took some measurements from the original center of axle forward to different points on this frame so that I could use that as reference to come back to to make sure that we are square. I've got it, I've got it uh, C-clamped in right where I want it. Uh, the tops are even, the bottoms are even. It's the exact same thickness of frame and height of frame, which worked out really well. So the next thing we're going to do is uh, mark out all the holes. This thing has a huge cross member in the front <clears throat> because it was a tandem axle, and I'm not sure we're going to use them. Um, it, it's a massive cross member. We're going to see if we can use the other one. We'll have to see for sure, but uh, we're just about ready to mark off the holes here on each side. All right, so I used the paint to mark these holes, and I took a scribe and a, a real sharp pick, and I went inside each hole, and I made a mark on the diameter of the hole so I'd have something to go with. Then I come back with a center punch. I wish I had a transfer punch that was the right size uh, to go through these holes and just make my center hole, but these aren't drilled holes in the original the donor frame they're punched holes so in a punched hole what you have is one at one side of that hole on one side of the material is larger diameter than the other because it's punched it's not actually a, a milled hole so they don't work real well but like i said i did the paint described in the center point and you know we're using the milwaukee mag drill here the battery the cordless one and I drilled this whole entire side on one battery, and I'm ready to drill the other, and I still have uh, three bars out of four. So this thing does very well. I'm using an annular cutter. We're using 5 8 bolts, and they'll be grade 8 bolts, of course, and we're drilling an 11 16 hole. Typically, I drill the hole the same size as the bolt because um, I want it as tight as it can be. But in this particular setup here, I think I figured out there's 14 bolts just in this first piece that all have to line up. And I left myself some room for error um, because I don't want to have to go back through and re-drill stuff. That's, it just makes a mess. So that 16th of an inch larger is only a 32nd on each side of a bolt if you look at it that way. But sometimes that's the difference between it lining up well and not. Um, it's actually drilling nicely. Uh, I usually lean against the drill just so as I'm turning the uh, handle here, I don't push too hard and it pop off. I've never had it come off, but you've got to be careful when you're using this. If there's any rust on the side of the frame, you need to knock it loose because it will not hold. You know how you get that rust flaking, you know, at least in our part of the country here up in the northeast. You know, rust is something real. And I know a lot of guys are going to say something about the rust on the frame, but you need to realize that this is typical in our area. 
and it's not going to hurt this frame whatsoever. We've had frames and trucks that I see a lot worse than this going down the road. This is actually in pretty nice shape. So, but when we're done, we'll we'll clean it all up. I I'll probably give it a paint job. We're going to pull the cross members out because we'll have to move them for the new drive shafts once they're done. The location will change. And a thing to note about these cross members is they're not put in all at the same level. They they tend to be a little bit higher in set in the frame channel in the front of the truck and as they work their way to the back they work lower um, I'm sure that's to help with the drive shaft angle but uh, we got to remove them all and we'll have to put them back in I think we're gonna have to use two <clears throat> because we are have two carrier bearings and then we'll have that at least something there'll, there'll be some cross member between the two front hangers um, for the leaf springs because that has to have a brace side to side or it'll just break the frame there you saw me I was taking the bump stop because this again we used the frame from the passenger side it didn't have the fourth hole for the bump stop so I took the bump stop put it in place bolted it in marked the hole took it off and now we're drilling the hole <clears throat> now we're gonna get set up on the other side it's a repeat rinse and repeat that's all we're gonna do here I didn't have a 13 16 uh, annular cutter so I'm gonna be picking one of them up uh, this morning here and then we can finish up the cutting on this side my goal is to get this uh, all drilled out roll the put some tires on that other suspension and roll it in here and get it lined up throw some bolts through it make sure everything lines up good and then make my decision on what else we're gonna be doing so I'm getting the other side set up here um, this this way of doing this is working okay um, it's not my preference of course it would be nice but you know when you when you paint these holes or you mark like I painted them and I took a, a sharp pick and then traced the circle the, the hole out it's just not nearly as accurate it'd be nice if I had a transfer punch that fit but like I said earlier these these holes in the original frame are not a drilled hole they're a punched hole and you know they had huck bolts coming through them and a huck bolt gets you know basically it's a huge rivet kind of deal um but we're going to be you know drilling with annular cutters and them annular cutters i mean we get some serious life out of them i mean i have i have one cutter that has done six trucks and it's never been sharpened but we use an awful lot of oil when we're drilling and it sure seems to make them last a lot longer because they're not cheap but they work very well so we're getting ready to take the axle <clears throat> into the shop and go ahead and mount it up. But the way this is going to work out, I'm not going to be able to use this this little short shaft. I was hoping I could, but you know the slip yoke needs replaced, and it's just not worth it. So we're just going to pop it out of here. Uh, I'm using a brass hammer here on those uh, socket extensions. Uh, they're 12 millimeter, 12 point, like I talked about earlier. Uh, I use a brass hammer so it doesn't mess up the end where of the anvil where the impact would go in <clears throat> i've had that brass hammer for a long time and it's it's getting to be where it's loose you know in the handle i have to do something to replace it or something i don't know but i need to get this drive shaft out of here and it's a whole lot easier to do it now than it is with it in the truck i did end up using <clears throat> drilling out for that monster cross member we don't need that thing but it surely isn't going to hurt um you know, I lie to myself sometimes and say, I'm just going to do a real quickie budget build here. I'm going to use what I got. I'm not going to go hog wild spending money and stuff. I'm just going to make it work. Well, most of you probably know better than this anyways, but I'm looking at this thing and we're doing slack or uh, we're doing brake chambers. We're doing brake shoes. We're doing drums. We're doing shocks. We're doing probably airbags. I think the airbags leak. We're going to do relay valve. Um, um, sensors, some ABS wiring, you know, there's just a pile of stuff to do because, you know, um, among all things, if if I want to build a truck for us to use, I want it to be usable. And I don't want to, I don't want to be, I want to get in that truck and go and do something, but uh, there's this wrong with it or that's wrong with it or this needs attention. You know, there, it's a whole lot easier for me to just spend the money now and do what needs to be done put it in the truck and then I don't have to touch it again and that's the way I kind of look at things you know, regardless if it's something that I'm, I'm selling or something that I'm working off myself 
uh, this trucks for myself so um, you know it's no different so I just I don't want it's hard to make the time to do something like this so I certainly don't want to do it again but we got that drive shaft out so now we're getting we'll be ready to slide this thing in we're gonna use a great all we're gonna slide it up underneath the frame and put it in place I decided to use the great all to bring this in I've got it the change you can see around the axle hub on each side and then a uh, third one on the yoke of the differential on the pinion. I did that so that I can manipulate the axle, tip it forward, lift it up, all that kind of stuff so it will make it easier to get these brackets lined up. I'm a little too high right now. Um, when I first set it in there it was much closer but I got my wife just uh, letting it down a little bit. Now if you notice this leaf spring hanger it's really long and uh, it's aluminum. They do that because this leaf spring goes underneath the axle and then the airbag sits on top of it and the pre the original axle to this truck had a uh, leaf spring over top of the axle so the leaf spring hangers were much higher. Now we're going to be putting on an air ride uh, level sensor level switch whatever you want to call it valve on the back of this thing the this axle here being it was the rear of this truck you don't the tandem axle only had one leveling valve and it was on the front drive axle so we're probably just going to make a tab weld it to the back of this housing and get our ride height you know once we decide where we need our ride height to be um, we'll get that set up and get it plumbed in but um, I'm just running some bolts in here I'm trying to get all six because we have to go through the leaf spring hanger, through the frame, and then through that massive cross member. And it, that cross member, I don't know how many bolt holes are in it, but it's a lot. I mean, there's six just in that leaf spring hanger, and then there's one, two, three, four, five, six more on top. I can't tell anymore, but they everything lined up pretty good. I was pretty happy. I was a little concerned because the way we were doing it, um, I, I, when we put those frame and frame sections up there, you know, I was using spray paint. I didn't have a transfer punch that would work, but, you know, thankfully, uh, so far so good. It's all working out. We're able to get it all in, but uh, I've miscounted on all my hardware. Uh, and, you know, I wanted the washers that are smaller sized. Um, I think they're called USS. I, I'm not sure. Anyways, they're a smaller washer than normal, and they didn't have any. So I, I bought what they had, and I'm just not happy with it. So I'm going to go get some other hardware and uh, change it all out. Because I'm just not happy. And if I'm not happy with it, it, you know, it'll just bug me. So here I'm backtracking. <sighs> kind of a bonehead move. I put all these bolts in, and I... I thought about it before I'm like you know I want to put never seize on these bolts before I put them in here and wouldn't you know it I put all these long bolts lining them up one by one and put them in a leaf spring hanger and I didn't put a stitch in never seize and that's a steel bolt going through aluminum and I complain about that all the time but you know it is what it is so we're pulling out now we're pulling out every single bolt one at a time putting never seize on it and putting it back in here in a minute you'll see how many bolts are truly in that cross member but we're going to skip forward because this gets you know, kind of tedious here. I'm going to continue to put the hardware in this cross member. My wife is sweeping up all the drill shavings. Look at all that. It just seems wrong to take that much metal out of a frame. But I got to tell you, getting that Milwaukee magnetic base drill with those annular cutters, was it was the correct thing to do. Uh, that thing works so well. I basically drilled all these holes in this frame after the layout in an hour and 15 minutes. I mean, it it's cut this job down so far in time. You know, it really really is a great tool to have. And I did all all on one battery. You know, it, it's just such a great great drill. Now you can see how many bolts are actually in that cross member. Now I'm run, I ran out of hardware, so this is about as far as we can get. But um, we got some plans. Uh, this this rear end has ABS, um, but 
for whatever reason, they cut the ABS wires off just outside of the actual, uh, the actual hub. So I don't know if I'm going to splice onto them wires and, you know, try and use those or if I'm going to uh, just replace the sensors. I'm going to see. It's not going to be simple because I don't have a VIN number for this. I don't have um, a serial number or anything on the tag on the axle I can go with. I'm probably just going to take the ABS sensors off, take them into the parts store and see if they can match them up with something, I guess. I, I don't know what else to do. I wish I had a VIN number for the cutoff. That'd make things a lot simpler, but I couldn't find anything on that frame stamped in, and like I said, the tags on the differentials are completely gone, but you know, hopefully this is going to turn out well. This is going to be well worth the effort. Um, now we're going to get jack stands underneath this because I want to lift the rear end of this up and get it up in the air because we got to clean up the, uh, the axle and you know tear it all down and all that kind of stuff but we're almost as far as we can go for the day but you know it's not too bad just like i said i've done milwaukee drill cut it cut it down i think i think we're just over an hour and 15 minutes and actually drilling the holes after the setup so that was pretty good all right so here we are all the hardware went in pretty easy um lined up pretty good uh i really prefer the the smaller washers that go with these I don't remember what they're called it's kind of a, a machinist washer or something it's a little bit smaller diameter outside it, I think it looks nicer but this is all we got it, that's all they had so you know it is what it is they're grade 8 hardware um, I ran out of washers because I wasn't going to put washers on this side I was just going to run just straight bolts and put washers on the other side and since then I've changed my mind so what's a few more bucks and washers it doesn't matter to me you know, it's just a few bucks. Surprisingly, so far, we have $154 in bolts so far. And I have all the bolts I need, but I'm short washers. So I'll probably spend another, I don't know, 10, 10 12 bucks on washers. Everything lined up good. I mean, we, you know, just manipulating the, the uh, bracketry. I ended up using that great big massive cross member from the tandem axle. We didn't need that, but it isn't going to hurt anything for sure. And for our intentions for this thing, it might actually help us. Now we are going to put, probably going to put a bracket or a cross member back here. I'm not sure, right above the bags, because we don't want the frame twisting as the bags are pushing on it. We want that to be good and solid. And then we're going to cut the frame right about here. And we're probably going to put a hitch plate on the back. So, But now, where we're at is, we're going to get some more hardware. And then the next step will be after we bolt all that stuff tight, uh, we're going to jack the frame up, let the axle hang, and start taking that apart, getting all the things off, like the drums, the brakes, the, the uh, brake chambers, the hoses, S-cams. We're going to go through it all and make sure it's good to go. So make sure you stick around for part two. We're going to keep going on this. We're going to try and make this as budget-friendly as possible. Um, we are going to set this thing aside here shortly because we have another one to do. Um, we're going to bring the beverage truck in. The beverage truck is going to get done differently. If you guys remember, you can look back. I will put a link to the beverage truck video up here, and you can watch that. But on that truck, when they make it a beverage body, they cut the frame right here and they drop it down real low so that the container, or the, the compartments of the beverage body can go almost touch each other in the back. So we're going to have to do that next. So we're going to have to take this one out but i want to get it apart and i want to get all of our parts coming first you know get it torn down get our parts coming and while we're waiting on parts for this we're going to work on the beverage truck and parts for the old duramax are trickling in still not all here yet heads aren't uh, finished up but as soon as we get that that truck's priority so Anyways, that's it for now, guys. If you like what we're doing, give us that thumbs up. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Leave your comments down below. We'll catch you on the next one. Red light.